Hi, this was going to be everyone's favourite segment mailbag, but the cupboard is kind of bare and I was really excited about this one so I couldn't wait for anything else to turn up to do like a full-on mailbag segment. So I'm going to open this. Now, I've got three separate packages. They come from KJ Ross Security Locks um, here in Australia. They're a, a prestigious Australian manufacturer of security locks. And you know how I've done quite a few videos on security locks. Bit of an interest of mine. Um, they've seen my videos. Yeah, they've been going like 70 years. And uh, they make electronic locks here in Australia. So you might be familiar with all the uh, brands that I've talked about in previous videos. They're all international brands. Well, as far as I know, uh, Ross locks are the only ones in Australia that actually make um, electronic locks here. So hopefully they've sent um, an electronic lock. Fascinating to see that they actually make <laughs> security locks here in Australia. Bloody ripper. Thousand series electronic combination safe lock. There you go. Very similar to one of the uh, international brand ones. So ooh, that's very nice. So we've got an electronic lock, um, a smart lock, and a, there you go. Oh, that's chunky. Oh, I feel the quality in that bad boy. Wow. Yeah, these are all made in Australia. I'll show you up close later, but there, I believe these are uh, Ross designed um, keys. You can get, uh, you should be able to get different uh, key lengths on these. So depending on like the thickness of your uh, safe door or your other door that you try and do, geez, that's, that's a solid chunky beast. So this is really cool. They've sent us in the three different types of locks which you can get on modern safes and modern uh, security doors and whatnot because they're not just uh, for safes. You can install these on some uh, an entry door to some sort of secure uh, facility and that's why they have versions like this one that are a uh, swing bolt uh, design that actually swings in and it's got the curved front on it like that whereas this is your more uh, traditional safe locking uh, deadbolt design. Isn't that shiny? That's like C-3PO shiny. Ross, um, highly reputable uh, Australian manufacturer. They've been going for more than 70 years. Family owned uh, business. They make some really awesome quality uh, locks that are certified. I think they're certified to like VDS international uh, standards and stuff like that. But we've got three different types here and we've got the traditional uh, key uh, type lock. It's got uh, the center arrangement here. With uh, We'll have a look at the uh, key in a second. And then you've got a uh, swing front plate like that which can go on your uh, safe or your door or whatnot then you've got your modern electronic uh, lock like this which is just a standalone electronic uh, lock these are generally going to be a lot more secure than your key based ones because your key based ones if you've got the specialized picking tools the custom picking tools you can't pick them with just your regular you know raking lock picking uh, tools that your average thief might have uh, you've got to have very specifically custom designed uh, tools for them but anyway they can actually be picked um, by a skilled picker with the custom tool but these electronic uh, safe locks these are incredibly secure I'm not sure if anyone please leave it in the comments if you know if anyone has ever hacked an Australian uh, made Ross electronic security lock some of the more the larger international brands they have been hacked like you'll see somebody at uh, DEFCON doing a presentation or something that they spent two years and yep they finally hacked it and they found some side channel attack ultimately this is on the front side of the safe take it off to change the battery and you have access uh, to the battery power and uh, to this interface as well and if there's any side channel attacks are uh, possible via that then in theory it's possible but they're much more secure than these but these are still like incredibly uh, secure and then we've got a modern uh, Bluetooth lock it's the same uh, swing bolt uh, design and this goes on the front of your safe instead of a keypad it's just got your batteries basically um, gives you access with your shoe phone um, to your safe and you might think that's very unsecure but eh, we'll have a look at it so this is the 700 uh, series lock and it uses I won't show you the actual key but it uses a uh, nine lever uh, pick resistant uh, lock in it and I'll put up the uh, details here of all the uh, security stuff that they actually have built into just this regular uh, key lock on this thing it, you know it really is quite remarkable it's double bitted as you can see on both sides this one has nine different uh, lever positions in there so that's why it's a 
pretty thick and chunky boy. I'll show you a uh, thinner six lever one later. Anyway, these are highly secure key locks. Um, so really you don't have to worry about your average feet being able to get into this. They really won't. And yes, it does actually have a reset hole on it, but that's um, that would be kind of difficult to get into when your safe is bolted in there against the wall. Yeah, good luck with that. But again, depending on the uh, safe design, you might have a big cover plate over that that actually prevents physical access um, to the reset set pin. It's up to the safe designer. We're going to try it out. They actually have end-to-end uh, key, -end, uh, key encryption, which is on your phone. And uh, Ross actually uh, formed a company in consultation with a, a couple of other uh, companies called Veru, And that's the app. I just downloaded it onto my shoe phone. We'll try it in a minute. And apparently it doesn't connect to the cloud at all. And uh, we've got our secure uh, one-time key down here. So we set it up. You can set it up on two different uh, shoe phones. So there's two owners and the good thing about this is you can have like uh, security guards come around for example and they can like audit the lock um, as they're doing their rounds to make sure you know actually no one's actually gone into that room or whatever uh, a lot of electronic locks I think Ross do a version of this with a little LCD um, on it like a smart LCD download the audit uh, trail for who's actually entered and when and stuff like that but of course which lock solution you choose depends on your requirements if you've got like a gun safe or something like that and you absolutely must get into it you know you don't want any your battery to be dead and you don't want to be dicking around or something like that you would use like a probably a key safe uh, lock like this so unless you physically lost the key or you <laughs> forgot where you put it yeah this is the most reliable uh, mechanism electronic locks incredibly reliable but once again in you know in a real emergency um, yeah you could find Murphy's Law the battery's flat or something like that but if you've got a safe I would recommend an electronic uh, lock a quality electronic lock not one of the ripoff brand names you can buy ripoff brand name ones on eBay don't buy them they're crap and Bluetooth I'd really only recommend this if you have like a specific requirement for like access control where using your phone and the Bluetooth is you know advantageous for just a uh, home safe or something like that I, I wouldn't want to do that my phone's always locking up or doing something you know dumb so I would stick with just the regular dumb electronic uh, keypad lock like this now one of the scenarios where you might want to use a Bluetooth uh, lock over a keypad lock uh, and use your shoe phone to open it is that in a public uh, environment the keypad is to Susceptible to various visual attacks either somebody's looking over your shoulder from a distance they have a camera secretly set up or something like that and they can watch you put in the keypad or um, if somebody has a thermal imaging camera you can get these uh, for your phone now they can um, walk up behind you of course and if I one two seven eight for example and bingo we've actually got the pattern and that'll stay there for quite some time as you can see and that will tell us which buttons were actually uh, pressed and uh, then it can limit the amount of code options that's where you know you've got to have a physical device like this to actually uh, open it and the spin uh, combination locks they're also uh, susceptible to visual attacks as well so that's where something like this would come in and eventually over time some of the keys can actually wear out so if you don't uh, change the code around um, yeah you can see by visual wear as well or there could be another method to like reverse fingerprints and that sort of stuff and it just limits your code uh, options and then you can probably get in if you know like the four or six digits so let's tear down this 700 series Ross lock uh, with nine levers so we're talking 1.9 million combinations for the dual bitted key here well I'll tell you what I'm having a hard time getting this apart the machining the fit of this thing is absolutely incredible and this is one of the security features of the Ross locks is that uh yeah they're so well machined and well there we go we've got a hey, oh <laughs> they all popped out oops all the levers are coming guts up and check out that that is one solid die cast piece wow what's more amazing is the design of this 700 series look at this they've got nine count them nine different levers so right off the bat that is difficult and then they're alternately sprung. So this top plate is sprung this side. The next plate is sprung this side. So they're alternately sprung. So that adds to the difficulty of uh, picking this right off the bat. And there you go. We can see in there. You can see how that turns. And these are all very precisely machined. They're absolutely incredible. I have actually spoken to Ross Locks. And they do extol the virtues 
of their precision, their in-house precision machining there are in-house computer controlled CNC machines for the uh, plate. So this is a lever and this is going to have um, various, uh, I probably can't even tell you every single thing on here, um, but they've got false gates in here and anti-picking measures which are going to make them difficult. As I said, alternately sprung on opposite sides, that makes it more difficult again. And uh, I believe some of these like rounded corners in here, and don't know exactly where, but they actually have uh, uh, patterns on these uh, kinds of things, which um, yeah, it makes these incredibly difficult to pick, even with the uh, the actual customized picking tool. It's not like you buy the you know eight hundred dollar customized picking tool, you stick it in, you turn it, and it does the job. No, you've got to have the skill, you've got to have the tools, you've got to have the talent. And then you'll notice that the bolt throw. This entire bolt plate here goes right through the middle. <laughs> that makes it more difficult to uh, keep tension on this thing when you're trying to pick it. Well, you can see the curtain down in there as well. That'll have its own sprung uh, lever as well. So this is why this is known as a very difficult uh, lock to pick. So um, yeah, you can feel pretty confident if you've got one of these bad boys on your uh, safe, that's for sure. And I won't take it apart any further, but under the underside of the uh, bolt plate, you can see the curtain there, and that, I believe, will have a spring uh, lever in there as well. So if you picked this side, you've still got to get through um, and apply tension and pick the other four on the other side. So, uh, yeah, that's just oh, it's, it's unbelievable. Yeah, I... Not even going to try. So it might look, you know, fairly simplistic, but there's a lot of uh, lock design art that goes into this and probably half a dozen, dozen different, uh, you know, anti-pick measures. So that's why it's got the reputation that it does. Yeah, so I just put that back together and I cannot believe the just the precision in the machining of all this thing. There's nothing loosey-goosey in there. It's really a top quality key lock. You won't get much better than that in the world. All right, a teardown of the 1000 series electronic lock. I mean, all the interesting stuff is in here because this is where uh, the secure keys are kept. This is just a digital interface. I mean, you know, you can smash this off, you can get access uh, to these, uh, you know, wires and everything, but you're still not going to be get in, able to get into this unless I said, as I said, there's some side channel uh, data attack or something like that, or potentially um, some sort of like high voltage, you know, overload or something that can actually get in. There is like one attack method, apparently one of the brands is susceptible, not this one I believe, but uh, where you can like fill them up with conductive liquid and you can activate the solenoid in them. We may have to uh, void the warranty. Is that a one of those security jobbies? Yep. Void, 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 void. Thank you very much for playing. It's going to lift off. Will it be potted? No, it's not potted. Safe manufacturers, they can like take additional steps, as I said, like to cover the reset um, hole. They could like do their own welding along here if they really wanted to. They could pot it if they really wanted to. They could do whatever. But um, anyway, we're in. There's the swing bolt me mechanism and you can see how that, the solenoid, oh, it's not a solenoid. It's a motor, it's a motor drive, good. So this will not be susceptible to a magnet attack, a magnetic attack to activate a solenoid. You've got to actually drive the motor and the little uh, you know, worm drive down there has got to swing this back um, and then the swing bolt will activate. So yeah, apparently um, this thing has like, a, I think like 10 times the um, strength that's required by the Australian standard. So this actually does come provided with a master code which you can and should always uh, override. So I won't show you that, but I will enter that now. Oh, there we go. Oh, it swung back. Uh, yeah, that was obvious. That was a um, that was the pivot point there. Oh, yeah, there we go. And we're in like that. And yeah, I think you can program the uh, delay time. Jeez, there's no gap in there, is there? That's good, there's no play in that at all. When I release this, because it's done its timeout thing, boom, and you ain't getting back in. So yes, you can have uh, super codes and stuff like, like you know, for super uh, users, master override codes. Yeah, they tell you, change the super code, add or delete manager codes, enable or disable manager codes. Oh, there you go. The safe lock and the entry pad must have the same super code encryption or the unit will not work. So presumably, if your uh, keypad fails like this, um, you would need your, you, you would have to tell them your uh, super code to, uh, and then they could program that at the factory, presumably, and then send you a new one. Anyway, I am impressed by the quality of construction here. It's really nice. Everything looks pretty schmick and tight fitting. Shouldn't spring out anywhere. 
There you go. Okay, so what does that do? Is that just like an anti-tamper? Boom, like that, okay. Yeah, I can only presume that this as an additional protection here for any sort of, you know, drilling or brute force attack on the side or something like that to get in there. And you can see how that works there. There's that little pin on the bottom, which then engages that down in there. So I'm not sure you're gonna be able to bump attack that. The weight just isn't there, like the weight in the pin isn't there to actually bump attack that. I don't, I, I don't think you're gonna be doing it. Nah. Nope, I'm not, uh, nope, I'm not seeing it. I think that, <laughs> I think that's pretty good. So I really like the uh, simplistic design of that and how it's assembled and this is a real high quality lock. I really like it. You get your money's worth here. There's the main board. That's our motor drive. Um, that's an L9110 or something. Um, so that's a dual channel motor driver. Is that a big ass series diode or is that back to back right across the uh, battery? But I can get a high res uh, photo of that. Always on my EV blog uh, Flickr account. There you go. They've got a resettable fuse over there. Nice. Novaton, I think, I see there. There's absolutely nothing special there. That's a Novaton uh, 8051 microcontroller. Um, it doesn't have any like a uh, you know, secure encryption uh, features or anything like that. No physical die hardware security or anything like that. But once again, you don't need that. And you know, your other major brand locks don't have those either because you don't need it. You're physically inside a safe. So like as long as you are protected in terms of, uh, you know, power line attacks and uh, stuff like that. But apart from that, there's, you know, there's nothing to it. You don't need much in it. The uh, the actual uh, code is kept inside the uh, non-volatile memory inside this puppy. So unless you can get physical access to it, um, yeah, good luck. So yeah, physically, that's very impressive. They use a separate uh, plate down there. It's very minimalist design. They've got anti-tamper uh, plate. That's like press fit uh, folded over into there, the big supports. You're not gonna smash this puppy open anytime soon. And here's inside the 1000 series Bluetooth lock with a uh, wave key override here and I've taken the screw out of there and if we take that plate off ta-da this is a six lever design count them looks like they got a back plate on there just to keep all that in place and these springs um, up against the solenoid here they just allow the plates to actually swing back so yeah that's exactly the same arrangement except they've added the key override in there so that is uh that's quite novel how they've done that. And of course, this is a universal mounting uh, footprint. So they all have to, you know, they can't just make it any uh, size they want. So it's all got to fit in there. So that's, that's rather neat. So that allows the solenoid or the key to actually operate that. Neat, huh? Just to show you that that's not susceptible to a magnetic attack. I've got my uh, neodymium, huge neodymium magnet in my sock here. It's barely magnetic because this is all uh, stainless steel. So, yeah, there's no way that we can get in there and manipulate that with a huge big neodymium magnet, which will boom. <laughs> there's absolutely nothing on the bottom of that board. So it's just the one Bluetooth chipset. You can see a little itty bitty motor drive under there. And that's all she wrote. So, yep, it's all in the software. Now, the one thing that you'll notice with uh, the design of these is that they're all stainless steel. And this is done for a reason, like all the internal plates are stainless steel, all the internal uh, levers, they're all stainless steel. And this is actually to prevent or it, it help reduce uh, what's called a gallium attack. And gallium's a, a uh, metal, you can go look it up. I, I think the lockpicking lawyer's done a video where he's like completely melted a lock away, like just crumbles away after like four or five hours of gallium attacking the aluminium in that but they build these out of stainless steel so that that is much less uh, susceptible i think it's still like in theory possible it would take like forever so these are going to be better than like a diecaster alloy lock like this one which could be more easily and faster eaten away by a gallium attack and once again you can see that they've got our uh, false gates in here for all of these uh levers so that uh you know it just makes it more difficult to pick but in this particular case it's a six lever uh wave key which isn't nearly as good as the ross r700 still it's it's pretty decent security and of course you can order it with or without uh the lock override system if you don't want that all right so let's see if i can turn this once again the tolerance if the tolerance is slightly off somewhere 
you're going to come and guts her and it's not going to open. There's something... Ugh. Here we go, I'll try it again, holding the top plate on. It will then open up and we can push that through like that. But if you get tricked on any of those false gates, you're going to come and guts it. So I've gotten all the levers out and you can see the bottom plate in there. And that is the slide that goes over as you turn the key. Whoa.